Welcome to Agents Growth Academy. My name is Jim Schubert and I am your headmaster. I hope you're ready to grow big or go home. Folks, I have a very special guest today. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're still going to add you a ton of value. You're going to walk away with some things that you can use, put into action in your insurance career right now. You're also going to learn about something that's very near and dear to my heart and very dear to my guest's heart. My guest today is Clay Snellings, and I'm going to tell you about him in a second. He's a fellow agency owner, and he's become a friend over the years. And what he's going to talk about is connecting with your why and leveraging your centers of influence to grow something extraordinary. Now, he's going to talk about this in a couple of different ways. Number one, how to rally what he's done. He's rallied an entire industry in our local Atlanta market around a particular cause. And so I know that there's a lot of you out there who love to give back, right? That's one of the beautiful things about our industry. We have so many giving, caring people. And a lot of you have causes that are near and dear to your, your, uh, your agency. He's going to teach you how he turned something from $0 raised to over $3 million in the span of just 10 or 11 years. Okay, so get ready for that. But you're also going to learn about how you can use this concept of connecting with your why and leveraging your center of influence to grow your book of business or whatever it is that you're trying to grow in your insurance career. So let's get to it. I'm going to introduce you in just a second. But Clay leads to inspire confidence in others so their potential is unleashed. So their potential is unleashed. Since joining the firm in 1986, Clay has served in several roles. As an insurance agent, he serves his business and personal clients. As a member of the executive team, he is active in the leadership of the agency, uh, which is Snellings Walters here in Atlanta. As CEO, it was CEO. He's transitioning now into chairman of the board. He was CEO for about 10 years or so. Uh, Clay's clients appreciate his sense of urgency in placing their needs above his own. Not really surprising there. With a concentration in the real estate industry, I did not know that, Clay. Clay's clients value his knowledge of their coverage needs and matching them with insurance companies that fulfill those needs. Clay also lives out his sense of purpose by working to unite the insurance industry to find a cure for cystic fibrosis. Since 2011, he has led the insurance the, the Insure the Cure initiative, which has raised over $2.2 million, I'll tell you, it's already more than that, for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Clay grew up in Atlanta and attended the Lovett School, my alma mater as well, before majoring in finance business administration at Stetson University. He is married to Lori and has three children, Blake, Walker, and who we're going to talk about a little on this episode, Emily. Welcome to Agents Growth Academy, Clay Snellings. How are you doing, my friend? Great, Jim. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. My pleasure. Did I do a decent job reading your bio? You did. You did. I, you, you prompted me to remember I need to go update my website and change that Ensure the Cure total. <laughs> that's all that right. That's all right. That was a year old. It's 2.6, so that's great. Hey, man, you're, you're moving the needle, which is what we're going to talk about today. That's fantastic. So you told me off air that I am what's holding you back from driving up to the lake today. All right. <laughs> what are you going to do when you're up there? What do you uh, like to Lori do when and I are, there? Lori and I are going to grill out tonight, and we're going to go for a walk, and I'm playing in a golf tournament tomorrow. So a little hey. R&R relaxing, uh, my wife and I. It'd be fun. Fantastic. An insurance agent that plays golf. I've never heard of it. Yeah, we're a rare <laughs> That's awesome. breed. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, listen, I'm I'm super excited to get into this conversation with you about what you have inspired me to get behind in my agency, along with many many others in our Atlanta industry market. And not only that, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but you've actually influenced others around the country who have started and ensure the cure of their own. And, and I'll let you talk about that in a second, but I'm curious and I, and I, I know the story, but I want you to kind of back up for everybody. Um, th this concept of connecting with your why and leveraging your centers of influence to grow something extraordinary. And by the way, before we get started, I do want to mention, um, Clay's going to talk about something that deeply affects his family. 
And I know that he would love your support. And I'm going to go ahead and put the ask out there now. We're going to have it in the show notes. So it's there for you already. If you feel so compelled to support Clay and what he's doing and what he's been able to create, just go to agentsgrowthacademy.com forward slash cure CF. That's C U R E C F. Okay. Uh, so, Clay, this connecting your why, leveraging your centers of influence, give us the background story. What was the pivotal moment in your life that started all of this? Wow, that's a deep one. Um, we, as a leadership team at our firm, uh, were exposed to Simon Sinek's video that was a TED Talk. Uh, called It's About the Why. And then we mm. found the book and we read the book and it just resonated with my business partners and I that it's not about what you do or how you do it, but why you do whatever you do. If it's sell insurance, be a parent, raise money for a cause, whatever it is, it's it's about the why. So I would encourage your listeners after they listen to this podcast to go and Google that if they haven't already heard it. Um, emotion uh, connection to a cause causes people to take action. Mm -hmm. And that's what Ensure the Cure has been able to accomplish since we got involved in this uh, and started it 11 years ago. Um, so our messaging, our efforts, our communications are all about connecting the why and then using networking centers, people that you know, one of our great sayings in sales and our in sales training in our agency, when you're talking to somebody who's an influential person that could help you grow your business is who do you know that would take my phone call just because you asked, just because you said, Clay's a good guy. He knows what he's doing in his work. Um, please take his call. And, um, and if he can help you, if there's mutual benefit to you guys getting to know each other, doing business, whatever, then great. And if not, it's certainly okay to say, hey, thanks for calling. I'm good. I don't need this, that, or whatever. And, and, and go on with your life, go on with your day. Um, uh, but that's, that's the why connection is we, we kind of got, we kind of focused in on this concept and then the cystic fibrosis story and all of that. I don't know if you want me to do oh, that. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. Right now that I yeah. Can. My question to you and for our audience, I want them to learn about this. What is your why? Why is it yeah. so powerful for you? So my, my why is to find a cure for cystic fibrosis. And to, as you said, in the, in the opener, our mission, our why statement as a business is to lead others to inspire confidence so that their potential is unleashed. But, my personal why is to work uh, to find a cure for CF. So my youngest daughter, Emily, who you mentioned, uh, was born with cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic disease that affects the lungs, the pulmonary system, and the digestive system primarily. And the genetic defect that she was born with causes the mucus in her body to be thick and gooey and cause blockage and infection and all kinds of complications. And when we were told of her diagnosis when she was three months old in 1997, uh, we were told that um, people with cystic fibrosis did not live long lives and that she would be beating the odds if she made it to age 30. Wow. And that was a sobering time. Mm -hmm. um, but the good news about that was if she had been born in 1957, they would have told us that she might not live to the age of eight. Wow. And so the progress that has been made in this wonderful foundation, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, um, is great momentum because fast forward 24 years, Emily will be 25 next month. The median life expectancy is now 50 years. In wow. her lifetime, we've picked up 20 years. And so back to connecting with my why, when you've got a when you've got a cause that you know could benefit an audience that is facing an, uh, a short life, um, you get inspired. Yeah. And so we started to evaluate all this and, and said, well, how can we, how can we talk to our friends 
And our industry is so full of great people like you who joined our leadership team early and have been one of our greatest advocates. How can we rally a group to join us in our, in our fight and, and in, our, in our cause? So we told stories. Um, mm. we, we were very transparent with how this disease affects my family. Um, we were very transparent by asking other families to come and share their stories. And um, we've, we've had great momentum. Can you walk me back to that moment with Scott, right? Back uh, from Chubb. Can you walk us back there and kind sure. of bring us up to today? Because it really is an amazing story of growth, especially when you start talking about the numbers of feet on the ground at the Great Strides Walk. Yeah, thank you. So Scott Dalton that you're referring to is an old friend who is the regional vice president for Chubb Insurance here in town. And um, I was supposed to attend an agent council meeting with Chubb back in April of 19 of April of uh, 20, uh, whatever year it was, 2011. Yeah. 2011. And I had to call Scott and apologize that I had to back out literally a couple of days before this meeting because my daughter had this disease, uh, cystic fibrosis, and she needed to go into the hospital for some treatment. And um, Scott was like, wow, Clay, I had no idea you had cystic fibrosis in your family. What is uh, 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 amazing about this connection is Chubb is about to participate in the Great Strides Walk in Atlanta for the first time because one of our colleagues in Dallas, Texas, and in Los Angeles, the Chubb regions in those places, they had already rallied around this, this cause. And they said, Scott, would you get the crew in Atlanta to go and participate in this walk? And when Scott learned of my personal connection with my daughter, he said, we were thinking, wouldn't it be fun to do the walk with one of our agents that sells, you know, it's one of our agents. And I said, Scott, that would be really great. So we got ourselves together in about a month and Chubb people and Snellings Walters people attended the walk. We raised $30,000, I think, in the first year. It was phenomenal year. in itself. <laughs> Well, thanks. But, um, you know, it was it was just, you know, getting asking friends and family to support us, as we've all done for various great causes. And uh, after that experience, my my owner partners, we got together and we thought, you know, because it's your family and because this agency was founded by your father, Emily's grandfather, let's make this the cause that mm. that we're going to rally around. And so we got focused and we realized that just like Chubb was willing to do this for this disease and they weren't directly impacted by it, they said, why wouldn't all of our other insurance company partners want to do this? Why wouldn't our, our friendly competitors like Jim Schubert in Southern <laughs> States want to join us in this cause? And over that 11 year period, we went from two teams to 50 insurance organizations outside of our great in, inside of our great city mm -hmm. who participate and they form a walk team and they come and walk with us in May and they do some fundraising um, through social media and email campaigns and bake sales and all that kind of stuff. And the momentum over that last 11 years has gone from that that party of two to a party of 50. And now we raise over 300 grand per year. 10X. And we, 10X. And the <laughs> impact that we've been able to make with that 2.6 million current total on the foundation has is something that you can be so proud of. Yeah. And I could go on for probably longer than we should on this well, podcast. Well, what's come out of that? I'm, you know, yeah. I, I think people, it's important for them to understand you know, what kind okay. of impact have you actually made? It's one thing to raise well, money, but. Yeah, of course. And thank you, Jim. So as I said a minute ago, if Emily had been in, born in 1957, she would, might have lived to the age of eight or 10. And mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of, of breakthrough. And the reason that that's so important with this particular disease is there are only 30,000 people who have cystic fibrosis in the United States. When you compare that to any other disease, diabetes, cancer, whatever, right? Um, there are millions of people who are impacted by those diseases. So CF is what is known as an orphan disease. And 
on their own, if just families like ours raised awareness, raised money, all that kind of stuff, the results and the impact that the foundation could make would not be nearly what they are. Mm -hmm. And our, our $2.6 million, which has been put in all directly donated to the CF Foundation, has helped fund research and development of care and treatments that didn't exist 10 years ago. Hmm. And the science and the breakthroughs that are happening, the latest thing is this, I won't bore you with the details, but it's called CFTR modulation. And it is like Star Trek uh, <laughs> when it comes to what it, what it does. And Emily yeah. takes a pill every day that's called Trikafta. And it's a CFTR modulator. And that drug exists because the CF Foundation partnered with pharmaceutical and research organizations by giving them big chunks of money to say, I know R&D for a disease with 30,000 potential customers is not a good investment. Mm -hmm. Here's $5 million, $10 million, $50 million that we want to fund the research for you and then if we get a, a, a treatment that's effective and goes to market, we'll share in the, um, the reward of having a, a treatment that, that sells. Yeah. So real quick, Emily's been taking Trikafta for two and a half years. She's not been in the hospital in two and a half years. Before she started taking that drug, she was in the hospital at least once probably twice, sometimes three times a year because her lung function was a roller coaster ride and she had to go in to get the extra care that only a hospital can deliver, yeah. IV antibiotics, increased tr breathing treatments, all this kind of stuff to help boost her health. Yeah. And this drug has, has changed her life, but it's not a cure and it doesn't right. work with everybody in the population. And that's why our efforts continue until the saying, and Jim, you know this, but until CF stands for cure found, not right. cystic fibrosis. Right. And that next level of, of, of a breakthrough that's got to happen is going to be expensive. Um, and that's why we need to continue to raise money so that we can actually cure this. And last thing, and I'll, I'll let you move on to, to another question is sure. this disease work that we're doing is a genetic disease, not only benefits the cystic fibrosis community, but all of these findings are also benefiting other genetic diseases because they're learning how to crack the code. Yeah. And, um, and that's really exciting. That's my yeah. why. Clay, thank you for sharing. And, and, you know, there's so many other things that I know uh, that I've learned about CF. We could sit here and talk about this for a while, not the least of which is, you know, for those who might be wondering, well, what's it like? Well, it, it, you know, part of it is, and we described, you just, somebody described this in a meeting we had yesterday. It, mm -hmm. it can, for a lot of people, it can be like trying to breathe through a straw. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, you and I have probably close to hundred percent lung function, if not a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and what did Emily have until she started taking Trikafta, if, if you had to guess? Yeah. So her her lung function declined from about age 10 to age 22 from probably near 100 percent down to like 38 percent. Wow. And so she couldn't go and run a 5K. She can yeah. walk three miles, but she can't run because her her heart rate is high, her chest is heaving because her lungs simply don't process the oxygen into her blood the way healthy yeah. lungs do. Yeah. Trikafta for her has not caused a huge bump in her lung function. Now it's in yeah. the mid forties, um, yeah. but it hasn't declined any further in the last yeah. two and a half years, which has been just an amazing answer to prayer. And, and on a daily basis, and, and we'll get into some of the kind of, you know, how did you, how did you do this with all the, the marketing and the branding and mm -hmm. the connecting with the why and stuff? We'll get into yeah. that in a second, but um, just one more question on the CF part. Uh, a day in a life of, of someone with CF includes what? Yeah. So uh, breathing treatments, usually twice, maybe three times a day that take about 45 minutes to and this is not just for uh, kids, right? This is for like no, adults just, trying to live their normal life. 
yes, adults living their normal life uh, <laughs> do this. And so she has a chest vibration vest that she wears that helps move mucus around. Um, and then she breathes in two or three different nebulized medicines to help aerosol the right stuff into her lungs to help break up this mucus. And then just takes, uh, you know, a hand, a fistful of pills every day to replace vitamin deficiencies and um, just all kinds of byproducts of what this genetic defect causes in her body to take care of herself. And she needs to stay active and keep her yeah. lungs working so that they are as healthy um, as they can be. And all that that you mentioned is on a normal day, right? But if she That's gets sick, day. it's worse. Like yeah. COVID was probably the thing that y'all feared the most in the past two yeah. years, I have to imagine. It was tough. Yeah. Because COVID was a lung impacted virus, the yeah. CF community didn't really understand, you know, if a CF person got COVID, was this going to be like, you know, one of those folks that really, really struggled. Yeah. Um, and we learned later that fortunately CF patients didn't do a whole lot worse than everybody else with COVID. Uh, yeah. um, but we were very, very careful for six months um, with Emily because we did not know and we didn't want to take that chance. Sure. Yeah. Well, th thank you, my friend, for sharing all that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a very personal uh, part of your life, but at the same time, it, it, it's not. And because yeah. you know that in order to make something happen and actually find the cure, you have to be able to spread it uh, in, in terms of the message. And, and as you said, connecting with that why and then leveraging those centers of influence. So um, I, I guess a couple things, you know, what, tell me about, you know, nuts and bolts, boots on the ground. How did you market this? You know, you talked about centers of influence, but give us the, the real nitty gritty. How did you actually take it from two people to 50? We're talking agencies, carriers, vendors, you know, partners of all of ours. How did you do it? So um, we part the first of all, we got the foundation staff involved in helping us with collateral uh, informational materials so that mm -hmm. we had uh, something to share. Um, uh, but and it included the story and it included the how how can I get involved? And we yeah. it was a three part ask, you know, make a yeah. donation, uh, become a corporate sponsor or form a team. So that was clear message of how do I help? Yeah. Boy, we really wish you would help. And they're like, well, what do I do? And, you know, so we were very clear about the call to action, but the networking side of it, Jim was basically forming a leadership team of our most staunch advocates with people like you. And then we create the suspect list of those in our industry that we know, and we divided it up the responsibilities amongst our leadership team and, and said, okay, who knows somebody at Travelers? Who knows somebody at RT Specialty? Who knows somebody at XYZ Insurance Agency um, that would take our call just because we had a relationship with them? Yeah. And so we, we knew we could get them to answer the phone because we either did business with them and they wanted to help people that helped them, you know, mutually yeah. beneficial or we were just friends and we respected each other. We knew that our firms did good work and that we were one of the good guys, that kind of thing. And it gave us the entree to be able to connect them to the why. And so mm -hmm. we divided and we conquered, we talked to suspects, we turned them into prospects. We told them how they could get involved and made it easy so that they didn't have to go and invest a whole bunch of time, money, and resources and figuring out ways to be helpful to us. And ta-da, 50 <laughs> organizations, 50 organizations are willing to form a walk team. They're willing for me and other representatives like you and people from the CF Foundation to come into their companies and tell our story, share videos, do all those things to get their people inspired. We love the word inspire. Yeah. In our mission statement, because yeah. it's a great word. And, and everybody, when they're inspired, they will do things that they wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Um, you know, 
make that extra sales call, run the mile in, in eight minutes instead of nine, all those kind of things. Um, that's the connector. And uh, when we can create inspiration, we can get people to take action. And I have to imagine that this is affected with an A, uh, your company's culture. Can you talk oh, to yeah. us about that? Oh yeah. Because that's, for that's anybody been... thinking, man, I, I want to, you know, I want to find out what my why is. I want to, uh, you know, in terms of like a, a cause or something for our agency, like there's, there's, there's benefits just beyond rallying everybody together to, to accomplish something. Right. What, what has it done for your culture? So our culture, Jim, you and I both are users of the EOS system, and I won't yes. go down that road. But uh, yeah, we've talked about it on this show uh, several times. So I say, you probably know what that is already. On EOS, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but one of the six key components of a healthy business is the vision. Yeah. And uh, we are very intentional about sharing our vision with our audience, which includes our employees and our clients and our suppliers. Um, but inside of that vision, uh, finding a cure for cystic fibrosis is one of the key components of our company's vision, in addition to growing and developing leaders and all that stuff. Yeah. But the, and so what has it done for the Snellings Walters culture? Yeah. They, there's, there's pride inside of our team, knowing mm -hmm. that ensure the cure is something that is associated with us, that we are responsible members of our community. Uh, and that we want to help others. Um, and so it's been very beneficial. And I want to share one other thing that we've, yeah. um, uh, we've implemented. Uh, we have been doing some leadership development programs with our staff because like you, we are dedicated to being a privately owned company and we want to perpetuate our business internally. Yeah. And this little tidbit about um, attracting and um, training and retaining top talent. And I don't mm -hmm. mean just general talent. I mean the best, the top yeah. talent. There's three things. Better boss, bigger vision, mm. brighter future. Oh, I love and it. And so that bigger vision piece, and this is not Clay Snelling's authored. I stole this. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> from Chick-fil-A, the company that we want to copy. Um <laughs> Better boss. So can you say those three again? By the way, I'm writing yeah, it down better myself. Better boss, brighter future, bigger vision. And ensure the cure is tied to that bigger vision and that folks want to be part of our agency because we're not just selling insurance, we're curing a disease. Yeah. And, um, you know, that matters yeah. to the top talent. It matters to the people we want. It does. And Clay, it's gone beyond just your organization organization i can tell you uh for sure and i know i've expressed this before um uh, i think i've expressed this to you um we we created we, we actually kind of stole like your cause page on your website we, we try to do something similar because we want to right be able to to uh to to further the mission of, of finding the cure and i have to tell you almost every single person that gets in an interview where i'm part of it they will say, oh my gosh, I got to tell, or, or people, well, we'll say it this way. People who get hired almost every single time, I'll say, you know, why did you choose us? And they said, I'll tell you one of the reasons why is because you guys believe in something bigger than just what you're doing. And when I saw that you guys had something that you were passionate about, like cystic fibrosis, I wanted to be part of that. I was like, wow, wow. I mean, I am more than happy to support you uh to, to to help find this cure but but to have the benefit that side benefit of people being attracted to your why which i'm more than happy to yeah you know, i talk all the time about listen guys are we competitors are you and i competitors yeah technically but at the same time like a rising tide lifts all ships we are all independent agents who are trying to uh, you know, make this world better. And like our mission is helping people thrive by providing peace of mind. We want their lives to be better than they were before they encountered us. 
Uh, and, and if we do that through providing the peace of mind that they don't have to worry about that stuff, they can go do the thing they're really passionate about. So I love it. It, it's amazing. People are attracted to that. So if it's, um, if you're on the fence and you're out there listening to this saying, ah, huh, ho hum, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if that's for me. I'm telling you, find your why, you know, and, and, and even if it's somebody else's why, like in, in, in my case with you, but. I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm just so passionate. I mean, heck you're a likable guy, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. but, but, and I'll tell, I'll tell folks this too. It was as simple as this. I remember however many years ago it was 10, 11, whatever it was you asked, I don't know how many people you asked, but there were maybe five or six people that showed up in a room in your office. And you, you called me and my dad when my father was still at the agency and said, would you guys mind coming down to my office? I've got, I think you had lunch. That's always a good mm-hmm. way to attract people. Oh yeah, food's good. Um, <laughs> um, but I want to talk to you about something that you might not know about me and something that I think I need your help with. And it's just like what you said before, you know, when you said, who do you know who would take my call just because you asked? And just because you asked, there was no way we were going to say no. <laughs> right. Right. But, yeah. but the fact that you, um, you know, and of course your, your mission is, it, it means so much to you. You're, you're, you're certainly never going to stop fighting for your daughter, but it does take courage to ask other people in your industry to do something that gets them out of their comfort zone, you know, to ask them to help because we all have uh, our time as our most precious resource. And of course it takes time. But I, I had to tell you, it is every second I've spent supporting you in this mission, this cause over the last 10, 11 years, every, I've, I've gotten far more value out of it than I've gotten out of many other things in my career. So I thank you. Um, but for anybody out there listening, thinking, you know, is it worth it? Um, that's a hell yes, as Tommy Breedlove would say. If it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, what's been really fun and supporting the why around this is the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is a national organization with 60 chapters around the United States. And they have a conference uh, pre-COVID every year uh, called the Volunteer Leadership Conference. Mm. And the, um, the really fulfilling and inspiring thing for me is when they want me to speak on a panel or something like that about Clay, could you share with the rest of these volunteers from around the country how you got your industry to do this? You know, can you please explain it to us? And that's just so cool. When anybody wants to copy what you do, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest form of flattery there could be. Imitation. So (laughs) there is, uh, that's right. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, I think is the phrase. Um, But there have been Ensure the Cure uh, efforts by some colleagues that we know in other cities like Nashville, New York, um, places like that, St. Louis, where um, it's been it's been replicated, not quite the same size as ours, but they've been but there's efforts nonetheless. And then other industries, um, the banking industry wanted to try to replicate this for cystic fibrosis. So, wow, what a great uh, testament and, and fulfillment when when that starts happening. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, before we get into the rapid fire round, Clay, I'm going to mm-hmm. give that web address one more time, because if you do feel compelled to become part of this, why yourself in any, uh, you know, form or fashion and any amount, um, just go to agentsgrowthacademy.com forward slash cure CF. And uh, my first question to you, what is one piece of technology or software that you can't live without? My phone. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. What and is it so, about Clay Snelling's phone that he can't live without it? You know, um, it's obviously every form of communication comes and goes through that phone. And, and if we're not communicating with our clients and our, uh, everything we do in our day-to-day world, um, we're lost. Yeah, I was gonna say Zoom. I was gonna say Zoom as well, or Teams. We've just switched to yeah. Microsoft 365, so Teams oh, is you? the new thing. Um, yeah. But I mean, good grief! What has the pandemic taught us about how we collaborate? 
Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So Zoom and my phone. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I was listening to uh, a priest um, on, a, on a YouTube thing that was, uh, I listened to this guy named um, uh, Bishop Robert Barron, uh, but he, he there was somebody else on the panel. I've already forgotten his name, but uh, he was he referred to your phone as that magical rectangle in your pocket. <laughs> it's like that is it's it's like this magic rectangle. Um, yeah. What is one book that you're reading right now, or one that you've read uh, in the past that you want to share with everybody? So this is a cystic fibrosis book. So forgive me, but it's called yeah. Breath from Salt. It's sitting right over there on my table. Yeah. And um, it was given to me uh, by a fellow board member and it tells the story of the evolution of the research and uh, uh, breakthroughs and struggles of this disease. And the impact that it's made on me is when I read about what life was like for people with cystic fibrosis back in the 30s and 40s, which is about how far back this book reaches. Yeah. It, it is, I'm so thankful um, yeah. that Emily was born in 1997 and not 1937. Yeah. Um, so that's a great, if you really want to dive into CF, it's a great book um, and, and very inspiring. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I know that there will be people that are listening to this that have a CF connection, or maybe yeah. there's uh, a, a family living that has a member that li living with CF. So um, that's a good one. Uh, what is, uh, what advice, this is a new question I've started asking guys, what advice would you give to your younger self? Don't be afraid. Um, I remember when I started in the insurance business uh, 36 years ago that, you know, I was inexperienced and um, young and all those things that, I didn't deserve to think big, work on something that was probably in my limited view was outside of my realm of expertise. And um, sure, you might try and fail, but my best piece of advice would be to, to think big and, and, and this is cliche, but be willing to fail because you're going to learn from it. I love it. No, it's not cliche. Um, do you know Tommy Breedlove? I know I mentioned him earlier. I get, I need some context. Or yeah, no. he he wrote a uh, he's a he wrote a uh, like USA Today bestselling uh, book called Legendary. He's here in Atlanta. Um, okay. He I was uh, top guy at Deloitte. He and his wife are actually coming over for dinner tonight, and I'm going on an executive uh, a retreat he leads for executives next week. Um, but. Oh. I'll have to introduce you because uh, when you describe that, that's like exactly where Tommy's, as he describes it, his zone of brilliance is, is helping people so, realize. Yeah, that. Jim, don't don't forget to connect to Tommy. Uh, Emily works for Deloitte. Oh, that's <laughs> thank you. I totally forgot that. Yeah, I totally forgot that. Um, and actually, before we kind of close out with with the last thing here. How is Emily doing today? I know you talked about tri captain and how that's yeah. uh, affected her, but w what's life like for her today? Yeah, thank you for asking. She yeah. uh, just started with Deloitte, the accounting firm, back in October. Yeah, uh, She's in the middle of her busy season right now, and so she's working long, long hours. Um, she is independent, uh, well-educated. <laughs> she has great friends. She lives with... Uh, three other sorority sisters from the University of Georgia uh, and not just in our neighborhood around the corner. Um, she's feeling great, as I said, because primarily because of Trikafta and she's, she's doing well. She says the biggest thing she's missing is she'd love to get married someday and she doesn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I will I love that video that she did. <laughs> then she starts reading out. My phone number is. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, if you want to meet Emily, any of the listeners on the thing, go to the snellingswalters.com website and click on the cause page. Yeah. That video is on there, uh, an interview with me and Emily. And at the end, she talks about wanting to find a boyfriend and she says, my phone number is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so, yeah, good stuff. That, but she's doing so great. Funny. Thanks for asking. 
Oh, uh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, Clay, one thing that I usually do for my guests is ask them whether they would enjoy a uh, hot soup or gourmet marshmallows and hot chocolate. And then I end up sending them whatever they choose. But instead, I think it's much more relevant. I mean, I'll send you some soup if you want me to. I'm happy to. <laughs> but I, I think it's much more relevant that I send you uh, something that's even more important to you. So uh, Agents Growth Academy has decided to become uh, a sponsor. And we're going to go in at the $2,500 level this year. Wow. And um, we're we're very very excited to to support you in this. And for anyone else, as I've said already, who wants to support this cause, go to agentsgrowthacademy.com forward slash cure cf. It's there in the show notes, and we'll we're going to be posting this all over to to try to get uh, uh, you know fundraising going and get the word out. But Clay, um, I really appreciate your time today, my friend. And if you left everybody with one piece of advice or actionable step, what would it be? Relative to, to being the best person you can be is find your why and follow it, pursue it. Um, that's where fulfillment comes. Many people don't know how to articulate it because they've never really focused on it. Yeah. Um, but when you write it down, when you when you put it in your in your brain and, and etched in your brain with real thought, you'll be amazed how quickly you will fulfill it. Beautiful, my friend. Beautiful. Clay, Thanks. it's been an absolute pleasure. Stick around for me for one second. Uh, but well, thank babe. you for being on the show today, sir. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks to all your listeners. Y'all have a great day. Absolutely. Folks, until next time, grow big or go home. Take care.